Whenever it comes to worst of lists, there's always a running theme with us critics. Once you gain knowledge of what ends up on a year-end list, you usually have a good idea what critic is going to choose what. If you've been watching my lists over the last couple of years, you'll know for certain that a slew of shitty EDM tracks will land in my top 10 worst list. I had many to choose from, many of which were kind of passable, some were plain boring, and the rest were simply shit. And this one right here has the honour of being the absolute worst of the world. Worse. Now, there are a few outlets that will try and convince you that this song is about being so fucked up on ecstasy that you lose complete and utter sexual interest of anything that even remotely resembles human life form. This, however, is inaccurate. What this song actually is, is one of the laziest, non-existent EDM tracks that have ever been created. Now, there may be a fair few of out there saying that I'm going after an easy target. This is just club music. It doesn't require any sort of in-depth lyricism. It's just made to be enjoyed. And you know what? Fine, that may be true, but this is endemic of something much bigger than that. What this song, which consists of exactly 10 words by the way, what this song represents is the idea that you can write some of the most baseless, uninspired and lackluster lyrics imaginable, stick them with whatever unmemorable electronic production that just so happened to spill out your fingers on the day and boom, there you have it. A hit song. This song represents the slipping of standards and it's scary to think that more crap like this will clog up the charts in the future. There's no merit, no memorable hook or distinguishing features. It's just shit. Plain and simple. Now on the surface this choice will probably be the most disagreeable of all of them. While it may be the most inoffensive and baffling pick of them all, there are certain artists that after a while you just get incredibly sick of them and even the most vanilla of tracks can piss you off. And to be honest, the quicker this guy goes away, the better. First of all, how is this song defined as pop folk? What is remotely folk about this song? Apex Predator created music that's more folk than this. Aside from that glaring inaccuracy, this song doesn't possess anything that could even only be considered as average. Merz has reached a point in his career where I look back and wonder, did this guy release anything that surpassed good? And I'm honestly struggling to find anything remotely worthwhile. His vocal delivery sounds half-assed and uninterested, slipping in and out of an American and English accent constantly, with lyrics that are so nondescript and baffling. In this song, Demi Lovato, the featured artist, has done something to break Merz's heart, which is laughable since there's no way in any universe the two would ever be together. Yet he's still holding on to the possibility that the two would reconnect and even Lovato is toying with the idea since she regrets her indiscretions. Not only does that not make sense in any way, and not only does Merz come off as a whimpering sap who's lost his balls, Lovato loses major points with me here. I never liked any material she's ever done, barring perhaps two songs, but to say that she is wasted on this track is a severe understatement. Limited to only the chorus, sounding just as bored as Merz does on this track, and the biggest red flag, their voices don't work well with each other at all. It's a cringe-inducing track that causes my stomach contents to rise through my throat every time I hear it. Next. Whilst we're on the subject of artists that have become so pointless that they should just go away, here's another one of them. I'm going to be honest here, there were a handful of tracks that came out last year that I was going to talk about, but I couldn't bring myself around to doing it, primarily because I couldn't be bothered, and this was probably at the top of my list. From the very moment Clarkson came into our lives, I haven't cared about her one iota, and unsurprisingly, this song has done nothing to persuade me otherwise. I honestly get the impression now that Clarkson herself has reached the point where she's releasing albums simply for a paycheck, and if this song is any indication of what the rest of the album has in store, it's not looking good. With the exception of the next song on this list, this is one of the most nondescript, simpering, and pathetic attempts at admiration for a female's love interest I heard last year. For something described as a heartbeat song, it doesn't have any sort of drive, flamboyance, or power to really hit home. Just a wall of blaring synths, washed out guitars, and fake drums. Clarkson's vocals are layered with so many vocal effects, I had to stop and check I wasn't listening to a Katy Perry song. It's practically fucking identical. With the overall message being that Clarkson can't function in her life without a bloke, someone who she has just this second met and knows nothing about, despite the fact that she claims to have dreamt of this person before she even met him and that she didn't know how she even 
breathed without him. Really hitting home on a strong independent female, aren't you, Clarkson? She sounds so bored, and if she doesn't even care to sound convincing on this track, why should I, the listener, give a fuck about this track? Also, was it really a good idea to have a failing heartbeat effect followed by a flatlining at the very start? If only it had stayed that way. If only. There are artists who I've come across that make me wonder whether they're going to end up in my crosshairs again, for better or for worse. Some have really surprised me and delivered material that's a step up from their previous works, and for others, not so much. For the next artist in particular, the fact that I hadn't heard anything from her within a two year period was an absolute godsend, but when it surfaced that she was returning in 2015, I was expecting nothing but the worst from her. And it turns out, she didn't disappoint. 29 years old, Carly. You were 29 years old when you wrote and released this. Can you even write anything that's above the mentality of a nine-year-old child? And no, I haven't listened to her new album, nor do I even care to. If the red flags weren't flying in your face when you saw the title of this song, then I can't feel any sympathy for you at all. Take everything that I said about Heartbeat Song, apply it to this track, and you've got this song in a nutshell. Overloaded, percussion-heavy instrumentation that's as recyclable as every other dance pop song out in the charts. Vocal effects layered on so thick that the delivery is practically robotic, and therefore any sort of realism that can be gained from this song simply evaporates. The only thing that prevents Clarkson's song going higher is that her song has the benefit of being written by someone with a smidge of maturity. This song, nope. The childish lyrics along with Carly's constant toying with this person just reaffirms why Carly isn't worth the time of day and why her songs will continue to remain unlikable and abhorrently insufferable. Again, if you want to check out my full review of this song, downstairs is the link. Go nuts! For those of you who watch my PSR reviews, will have a very good idea what will make it onto both best and worst of lists, and none of you should be surprised to see this song so high on the list. This was a tough one for me to decide where this song was going to land. Now, since Dear Future Husband didn't end up on the year end 100, you probably thought that this would have taken that song's place, right? And to be honest, for a while, it was going to. But when looking at this song compared to my eventual number one pick, I had to swallow my pride and do the right thing in the end. But believe me, it wasn't easy. Let's boil this down to the simplest denominator, shall we? This song is built as some empowerment anthem, right? I have to ask then, what exactly is empowering about this? And in reality, is this what you're willing to settle for? This, this limp-wristed, characterless, beige, spineless, poorly written, poorly executed piece of fluff that reads like it was written by someone who has no clue over what it means to go through any real tribulations or trials that life throws in your direction. This is the kind of thing a 15-year-old writes when they believe that the biggest strife they have to deal with in their meaningless existence is having their internet connection conk out for a total of three fucking minutes. Rhyming words with themselves, horrendous auto tuned vocal delivery that's not only unconvincing but has a tinge of delusion that Rachel actually believes what she's saying. Do you know, it's honestly kind of sad since absolutely no one on a planet of 7 billion is buying her shit whatsoever. Weak piano playing, stiff rigid drums, overwhelming emphasis on percussion which swamps out all other real instruments. This is not the forthright fist pumping anthem that makes anyone want to feel liberated or gives them a sense of drive, motivation or ambition. It's a weak as cucumber piss song and it's just as fitting as the person who gave us this track. How did this not make the number one spot? Well, believe it or not, it's actually quite simple. Sorry to say. Whilst I knew this song was going to land high on my list, I honestly considered whether I could put it at the number one spot. Considering that in the PSR review of Fight Song, I openly said that Rachel Platten had made a worse song than the couple who would eventually make the worst song of 2015. But when I stepped back and analysed, I had to ask myself just one question. Which is worse? The boring, generic, limp and characterless song or the song that shat all over one of Motown's greatest talents to have ever have lived. And in the end, it all finally became clear to me. You know, there are some songs that I can handle going to number one. For all my complaints in the past of mediocre tracks gaining number one status, 
I would take any of them in a heartbeat over this atrocity to music. I'm honestly offended and insulted that the UK public bought enough copies of this track to get it to the number one spot and that is something that I can never forgive because now this song has a place in UK music history. By now you've all seen pretty much every critic under the sun slate this song and I've yet to see a reviewer have this song any lower than the top three on their worst of list and it's not hard to understand and why. Not only does it rape the legacy of a legend of Motown, it's performed by two people who look like they need sex explained to them. Trainer having all the sex appeal of a corpse and Puth giving you the kind of look that Albert Fish would give his victim before he slit their throat and served them up with a side of green salad. These two combined have together made sex unappealing. The shockingly bad instrumentation which shifts from weak as piss do what bullshit that's overstayed its welcome. Transitioning with blunt force trauma to the R&B style is bad enough. But let's just count the ways of how bad this song is lyrically. Disgracing some of Marvin Gaye's catalogue of work, causing the sales of Kama Sutra to plummet down into hell, double negatives, Megan Trailer basically branding herself a bitch. I have Spectrum Bowls to thank for that little tidbit. Cheers mate. The lasting image of these two humping like rabbits that's enough to leave you with mental scarring that will never, ever leave your consciousness and no amount of illegal substances will ever be able to erase those images is only fitting that Marvin Gaye by Charlie Puth and Megan Trainer is recognised as the worst hit song of 2015. Congratulations fuckers, I hope you're happy. Whew. Well that was fun. So you go, those were my 10 worst hit songs of 2015. What do you guys think? Do you agree with my opinions, disagree with them, like these songs, hate these songs? And you should hate these songs, by the way. No one should like these fucking songs. However you feel, leave your opinions lists in the comment section below. As I always say, all of your comments are welcome. The more the merrier. And until my best of list, I'm that song with you, Guy. Thank you for your patience. You're all awesome. And take care.